Hey, it's Carolyn Grimm with Accounting How To here with another video to help you pass your accounting class. Okay, now hang on, hang on. I recorded this video and then I went to edit it and I was like, where did I go? I should be on the screen with you. So I just want you to know that I didn't abandon you. You're not alone in this scary accounting thing. I'm just behind the scenes supporting you. Now on with the video. Today we're talking about absorption costing versus variable costing. So let's jump in. So when we talk about managerial accounting, cost accounting, when we're figuring out the cost of a product, what it costs us to make that product, we're looking at three different pieces. We're looking at direct materials, we're looking at direct labor, and then we're looking at all those other costs that go into making a product. And we call that factory overhead or manufacturing overhead. And we combine those three costs to come up with the total cost of manufacturing that product. So let's bake a cake, shall we? When we're talking about baking a cake, we have those three components. We have our direct materials. In the case of our cake, it's gonna be those ingredients that we need in order to make the cake. So flour, sugar, eggs, and whatever else you're putting in your cake. We're also going to have direct labor, and that's what you're paying the person who's actually making the cake. It is the baker. It's not anybody else, just the person that's actually doing the work. And then the third part is all those other costs that are kind of behind the scenes in making that cake. So it might be electricity to run the oven. It might be the maintenance worker who comes in and cleans up after the baker makes their mess. It could be the rent on the bakery, could be insurance, and it could be something like parchment paper, like an indirect material, something that's not measurable directly to that cake. We're gonna buy it in bulk and then we're gonna portion it out. So that would be an indirect material. It would be included in factory overhead. Now, when we're talking about variable costs and fixed costs. Let's have a little reminder about that. So variable costs are costs that increase or decrease based on how much of a product you make. So for example, with our cake, the more cakes we make or the bigger the cake is that we make, we're going to need more ingredients. We're going to need more raw materials. We're going to need more direct labor if we have a lot of cakes that we need to get baked. Fixed costs are costs that are going to stay the same no matter how many cakes we make. So an example of that might be rent expense for our bakery. So variable costs increase or decrease based on volume and fixed costs stay the same regardless of volume. So when we're talking about the difference between absorption costing and variable costing, absorption costing includes all of the costs the direct materials, the direct labor, and both variable and fixed overhead. So we said our parchment paper was an example of an indirect material that would increase or decrease based on volume, but it's included in factory overhead. And we said that we had rent. So that was included in factory overhead, but we said that's a fixed cost. So when we're talking about absorption costing, that includes all the costs, the direct materials, the direct labor, and all of the overhead lumped together. With variable costing, we're only going to be looking at those costs that are variable, the costs that increase or decrease, but we're including in that both direct materials, direct labor, and the part of factory overhead that is variable. So our parchment paper or our maintenance person, if we have to add a shift because we're baking a lot of cakes, that might be a variable part of factory overhead. And then our fixed costs, we're gonna separate out from that factory overhead amount. So we're gonna take out our rent expense because that doesn't vary based on production volume. So when we're talking about absorption costing, this is something that we've seen before that should be familiar because this is the way we've been approaching this through our managerial or cost accounting class. So we start out with our sales number. From that, we're gonna subtract our cost of goods sold. That's gonna give us gross profit. From gross profit, then we're going to subtract our selling and administrative expenses 
and get to operating income, what we're actually making from our products. So included in the cost of goods sold part of this is both fixed and variable factory overhead. And we've also separated out the selling and administrative expenses. We're not considering whether those costs will vary. We just drop those down below the gross profit. So that cost of goods sold number is made up of our direct materials, our direct labor, and our factory overhead. Those three pieces are all in there. So the factory overhead costs that are included in that cost of goods sold would be electricity for the oven, the maintenance worker doing our cleanup, the rent for the bakery, the parchment paper. It's all in there. It's all in that one big clump of costs. So now let's take those costs and separate them out and look at how these costs behave. So our factory overhead, we have electricity for our oven. Well, if we bake more cakes, then that factory overhead cost is a variable cost because the more cakes we bake, the more electricity we're gonna use. We also have a maintenance worker who's doing cleanup for us. So if that maintenance worker is an hourly worker and we are making more cakes, there's gonna be more hours needed to clean up after us. So that becomes a variable part of our factory overhead. The rent on the bakery is not gonna change based on how many units we produce. So that part of factory overhead is a fixed cost. And then our parchment paper we said was an indirect material. Well, the more cakes we bake, the more parchment paper we're gonna use. So that part of factory overhead, those indirect materials, are going to be a variable cost. So what we do with variable costing is we separate out those factory overhead costs. We separate those into the variable ones and the fixed ones. And then we also take our selling and administrative expenses and we separate those out into variable costs and fixed costs. So what might those be? Well, let's talk about selling. Let's say our bakery sells directly to the customer. We may have a counter person selling those cakes for us. And the more cakes we sell, the more hours we may need for that person to be working the counter. So we look at that as a variable expense. Whereas we may have a supervisor who gets paid the same regardless of how many cakes we sell. So that would be a fixed cost. So we're going to try to separate those two things out. Then we're going to take those numbers and we're going to change the format somewhat for figuring our operating income. So we're going to start with sales because we always start with sales. From that, we're going to take our variable cost of goods sold. So that's our direct materials, our direct labor, and then any of our variable factory overhead costs, things like parchment paper. And that's going to give us what's called manufacturing margin. This is similar to what we saw with absorption costing, where we had contribution margin. So instead here, we're going to call this manufacturing margin, and then we're going to take another step before we get to contribution margin. So from that manufacturing margin, we're going to take our variable selling and administrative expenses, the cost of our front counter person working more hours, the cost of our billing department having to create more invoices, whatever those variable expenses are, we're now going to take those off our manufacturing margin. And that's going to bring us to our contribution margin. That's the amount of profit that we have left after we take off all of our variable cost of goods sold and our variable selling and administrative expenses. That's what we have to contribute to our fixed costs. From that contribution margin, then we're going to take our fixed overhead costs, the amount that we pay for our rent, for example. We're going to take also our fixed selling and administrative expenses. So those are things like insurance or the supervisor's uh, salary. And then that's going to bring us to our new operating income number. So we've taken the same information. We've just used it a little bit differently to get a different picture of what's going on in our business. Now, when you take those numbers and you divide them up differently, it's going to create some differences in the income statement. So the absorption costing is going to include the factory overhead fixed and variable, the selling and administrative expenses are going to fall below that gross profit line. And with variable costing, it's going to include all variable costs. And then the fixed costs are not going to be included in that contribution margin, gross profit. So which one is better? My students ask me this question a lot when it comes to differences in accounting. Which one is better? And it's not which one is better. 
It's what you need to try to figure out about your business. That's what's going on here. So absorption costing conforms to GAAP, generally accepted accounting principles. So if you're doing a financial statement that's going to go to investors or it's going to be used to create a tax return, then you want to conform to GAAP. So you're going to use absorption costing. But variable costing is more accurate for figuring out the true cost of manufacturing and selling your product. If you're doing something like cost volume profit analysis, this is going to help you get a much clearer picture of how your costs change when you manufacture and sell that one more unit. So it's going to help us get to a true break-even point. So each one of these is valuable because it gives you a different picture of the cost structure of producing and selling your product. So there you have it, your quick overview of absorption costing and variable costing. I hope that helped. I will see you next time.